hello everyone uh, we will continue our lecture series here uh, with this time i mean last class we discussed about uh, static optimization and how that uh, uh, i mean how what are the necessary conditions associated with that and things like that that only gives us kind of a background to understand this uh, dynamic optimization which is our primary goal here so that dynamic optimization uh, relies on something called calculus of variations and this particular lecture i will give some sort of an overview of what are the concepts of calculus of variations actually so there is uh, no way it is a complete lecture obviously like previous class it's an overview of uh, static optimization and this lecture will be an overview of uh, dynamic optimization which has its foundations on calculus of variations so let's uh, see some of these concepts here uh, before we move on to calculus of variations uh, let's talk about some fundamental theorems of calculus which essentially deals with uh, derivative of integrals. Okay. So, if you have an integral and then you take a derivative, remember the integrand variable is sigma which is uh, again integrated out, but then there is a variable in the upper limit x actually. So, that means the entire the integral will be a function of x. So, if you take derivative of that, what is the question, I mean the question is what is that and nicely the answer turns out to be f of x, provided f of x is continuous, I mean that is the only requirement actually. Generalizing it little more further, you can tell okay, what if this f has a variable x also inside that, but then the, the integral variables, I mean this uh, lower limit and upper limit are just, uh, just constants actually. Even then the, because it is integrated with respect to y, the left out thing is x, so we can alway, al, always take a derivative of that and it turns out to be, the answer turns out to be as if you take the derivative inside the integral. Uh, but then this is a function of two variables, so you talk about uh, partial, partial differentiation actually. So again the condition here is where f of x y has continuous partial derivative for x actually. Okay. Similarly generalizing that, uh, generalizing theorem to a little more, that means uh, we are talking about now not only this function is a, uh, like this f of, uh, uh, f, f of x y, that means the function is a variable the function uh, contains a variable x, but in addition to that we have this uh, in limits of integration also as functions of uh, x actually that is i 1 in the lower limit, i 2 in the upper limit. So, even in that case the, the answer turns out to be like this, so where part, part of the answer is like theorem 2 and this rest of the thing comes from these uh, two boundary conditions, I mean these two boundary functions actually. Okay. So, these are the fundamental theorems uh, that we should remember before going to calculus of variation actually. Now, what are the basic concepts of calculus of variation? On one side you see calculus, regular calculus, uh, on the other side you see some sort of calculus of variation concepts actually. So, in calculus normally we talk about functions, that means uh, function is uh, uh, something like to each value of the independent variable there is a corresponding value on the dependent variable, we, uh, we know what we mean by function anyway. Okay. So, this uh, example what you see here x of t is 2 t q plus 3 t is essentially a function of time t. Whereas, in the functional side we have to talk about some sort of a, I mean remember the, the ultimate uh, answer is uh, typically a scalar in the in the functional side, but this is essentially a function of time also, but it is a function of time through another variable which, which itself is a function of time. That means, you can visualize it as a some sort of a function of a function actually, where the ultimate result is a is, is scalar basically. Okay. So, here is an example, if you have you take the same same x of t and then you integrate it out over 0 to t, then what you ultimately get is some sort of a number 2 actually. Okay. So, it is actually, I mean if the moment you change this function, then obviously, you will get a different answer, but the, so for j, okay. but that uh, j is not given directly as a function of time, uh, but it is also is given as integral of x of t dt, I mean evaluated from 0 to 1 actually. So, these are the difference, function is a direct function of some independent variable, functional is a is a function of independent variable through some other function actually. Okay. So, when you talk function we talk about increment of a function, when you talk increment of, I mean when you talk functional we talk increment of a functional and as long as you interpret this as j as a function of x then the concepts are fairly similar actually. Okay. So, where you here you consider increment of a function, here you can consider increment of a functional that way. Okay. Let us just uh, see an example, if you have uh, delta j, which is just this definition. So, depending on whatever j you have, we can actually try to evaluate that. So, delta j is uh, j of that minus j of t 
and let us take j as something like this okay. 2 x square plus 1 uh, integration t 0 to t f then you just simply put uh, this uh, instead of x you put x plus delta x that means x plus delta x whole square here okay and then uh, this remains uh, 2 x square. So, then you try to simplify these two because these integrals are for the same I mean the limits of the integration are same. So, you can combine them together and then try to simplify out and then ultimately this one turns out actually okay. and we can uh, neglect second order terms probably and then tell okay this is the first variation and all that actually we will talk about that uh, in next couple of slides actually. So, this essentially gives us the total increment of a functional okay, what by definition. Now, this increment of a functional can be divided into first variation, second variation like that the way we do that in, in regular calculus actually. Okay, so, see that uh, this way this function and its increment is, is given like this. Okay. So, if you talk about a, a function f of t star plus delta t that is the value, but if you want to kind of uh, approximate that value and things like that then you take uh, delta t this side and then take uh, one first the slope there and then wherever it goes up to that point you have to consider that is uh, first uh, d f essentially. It is not f of t star plus delta t minus f of t star I mean that is the, that's the total difference actually. Okay. So, similar concept uh, you can bring it in the in the functional side as long as you interpret this j as a function of x. If you see the x x is here it is it is x and the x x is here is, is t that is the difference actually. So, x of t itself can take a different path if through this function and that one if you if you plot it here then the j will pop up and then you can you can talk about the similar concepts that happens in the uh, variation side actually. So, differential of a function and variation of a functional these are two same or similar concept very similar concepts actually. So, we talk uh, delta f uh, here which is like f of t star plus t minus f of t star obviously and here is also similar way. Okay. Here we took uh, take uh, like uh, Taylor series expansion. Okay, Taylor, you expand this by Taylor series, then first order term will cancel out. I mean, then f of t star and f of t star will, will cancel out here. You are left out with this uh, this first order term in delta t, second order term in delta t, like that actually. Okay. So all these terms together, we consider them as something like a first order deviation, second order deviation, things like that. And similarly, here also you can talk about say, exactly similar things with respect to the functional now actually. So, here we define this d f and uh, d square f and things like that here we define something like del j del square j and things like that okay. and this uh, this delta typically means variation actually and that is what it what it means actually okay. this first variation means del j by del x into delta x into <laughs> this one and then the del uh, second, uh, second variation means this kind of a thing which essentially comes from the Taylor series actually. So, the point is as long as we interpret this j as a function of x the concepts are very similar, but the, the x itself is not an independent variable uh, that, that depends on time and that itself can be a function of time actually. Okay. So, that is what it is. Now, there are very two standard results which is it may sound intuitive, but they are very powerful that way because the implications are large actually. Okay. First the term of result 1 tells that uh, and, uh, derivative of a variation is nothing but variation of a derivative. And then second thing tells about integration also the integration of a variation is nothing but variation of the integration actually. How does it come? It comes simply from definition I mean if you take uh, derivative of a variation this is the variation and you take derivative of that and then you take okay by, by definition I will put it that way x t minus x star t and then I, I can separate it out using this loss of calculus and it turns out to be like that once I take I once I interpret this as a x dot of t minus x star dot of t then this is nothing but variation of the derivative actually. So, this result is obvious and very similarly this or this side will also turn out to be like that. Now, the, the why this happens primarily this happens because this uh, derivative and integration operators are uh, typically linear operators. So, that is why it happens that way. Again we talk about some certain uh, uh, example to uh, clarify our ideas. So, also note that if somebody tells us only variation but by definition by notation we mean first variation okay. that is by default actually. Okay. So, let us calculate the first variation uh, coming from directly from, uh, from the definition that we talked about here okay. and uh, like this whatever we did here and then we talk about the, the re using this result whatever is here. So, does it lead to the same conclusion basically. So, this is this is the example here. 
So, method 1 we just follow the, the definition part of it, uh, we just again substitute x plus delta x minus uh, x I mean j of x 3, then carry out the similar analysis that we carried in the, in the previous example, proceed with the simplification of the algebra and ultimately we get something like this. Okay. So, we neglect the higher order terms of course, uh, by arriving this, otherwise this is the result actually. Okay. So, I mean you simply substitute all that and then there will be a quadratic term, expand that, then the integration are same limits. So, you can combine them together, cancel out the, the common terms and then you are left out with uh, something like this actually. Okay. Now, if you directly apply that, uh, the formula that we had, this is uh, nothing but that. Okay. So, by definition this is that, okay. then it is like uh, uh, using this uh, fundamental theorem that we discussed before, you can just put this is derivative inside the integral and then tell okay, this is what it is. Okay. And then obviously, it turns out that uh, variation of integral is, is integral of the variation of course. And we are like if you take derivative of all this, okay. so I mean this, this result is, uh, is because of that actually. Okay. And then if you take derivative of that, it essentially 2 x square partial derivative of x is 4 x and then 3 x partial derivative of x is 3 like that actually. So, what we got here, the first variation is exactly same as that. So, you may probably like to do this, uh, use this uh, result sometimes to get this algebra simple actually. Now, the in calculus of variations, we encounter various boundary point problems okay. and there are very two class of boundary value problems are typically like this. One is called fixed, fixed end point problems and the other one is free end point problems. Okay. And in fixed end point problems, the initial time as well as the initial states are specified and similarly, the final time and final states are also specified. That means, uh, you have a liberty of, I mean you have to start from here, you have to end there. But you have a liberty of going anywhere you like. You can go this way. You can you can you can go that way. Uh, whatever way you like, actually. But your initial time and initial states are must start from here, uh, and the final time and final states should end here, actually. That's kind of uh, fixed point problems. And free endpoint problems uh, are either completely free or they may be required to lie on a certain curve, actually. For example, here the t zero x zero is let's say fixed initial time and initial state. However, the final time and final states are supposed to lie on this curve eta of t. As long as they lie anywhere, we are okay. And these problems are very relevant also in engineering applications. For example, if you launch a satellite, uh, then it, it does not matter uh, uh, on that trajectory of a satellite where you join ultimately. Because once you join the trajectory of the satellite, uh, then from there onwards you will continue to follow actually. So, that way this kind of problems are very relevant actually here. Now, when we talk about uh, optimum of a functional okay, and uh, optimum of a functional is uh, very similar to what we discussed uh, last time in optimization. Here we are talking about uh, delta j which is something like j of x minus j of x star where x is nothing but uh, around uh, x star that means x is uh, close to x star. Okay. And then if you take if you consider this term then it has to be always greater than equal to 0. That means, it is uh, sign insensitive basically with respect to delta x basically. And similarly, it has to happen less than equal to 0, then it is a maximum point. right? If my neighbor, uh, if I consider any neighboring path and then it will always lead me to a higher cost function. Then obviously, the path that I have got x star of t is obviously a minimum path actually. Okay. Similarly, if I if I have the other condition that if I if I any if I take any other neighboring path, then I will end up with a lower value compared to this x star of t, then obviously x star of t is certainly a maximum path actually. And if these relationships are valid for arbitrarily large uh, epsilon, that means it, I do not have to confine myself only to the neighborhood of x star t then obviously, j of x star is a global optimum that depending on what condition you talk either it is a global minimum or it is a global maximum. Now, similar same thing can be picturally shown that way. So, what we are interested in is essentially is finding out this x star of t, let us say x star of t is our optimal path starting from let us say point a uh, t 0 x 0 somewhere okay, and then you end somewhere here then let us say this is our optimal path. That means, if I follow any other path around that, that is x of t, then certainly it is going to give me a non-optimum non -optimum value for the j of x actually. 
Okay, that means if I am talking about x star of t is a minimum thing, then if I follow this dotted line x star of t, then I will end up with the minimum cost value of minimum value of the cost function. If I follow any other path around that, then obviously I will end up with higher value of the cost function actually. That is what it uh, means actually. So, any optimal control problem typically we are interested in finding out this path uh, so that some cost some cost function will be minimize or maximize and it will also satisfy the necessary boundary conditions that we want to impose on the problem actually. Okay. Then there is a fundamental theorem of calculus of variations uh, which tells us that uh, like our uh, in a static optimization the first derivative was equal to 0, here it tells the first variation has to be 0 and it can be derived very, very much analogous way what we did before actually. And then sufficiency condition is uh, something like that. Once this condition is satisfied, whether it is a minimum or a maximum, we can verify using the second variation condition, which is like uh, del square j and uh, is has to be greater than 0 for minimum and is less than 0 for maximum actually. We have defined this term before by the way, like if you go back a little, uh, this first variation, second variation, all that we have defined here, this is the second variation term. Now, there is a beautiful fundamental lemma which uh, which sounds very, very, very intuitive and obvious, but it is not, uh, I mean its, it's implication is uh, extremely great actually. So, what it tells uh, is something like this, if for every continuous function g of t, this condition holds good, okay, no matter whatever is g of t, I mean the condition that is given to us is uh, for every continuous function g of t, this condition has to be satisfied. Okay, where the variation delta f, I mean this delta x of t what you are talking is certainly continuous in this interval t 0 to t f, that is the only condition. This has to be a continuous function and this integral uh, equation what you are seeing here has to be valid for all continuous functions g of t. Okay. And if that happens, there are infinite situation of course, but this theorem beautifully tells that if that is, if the such a case happens, then the only solution that is possible here is g of x, g of t has to be 0 actually, there is no other thing that can happen actually. It is very intuitively you can show that, but I will not digress so much actually. You can show it by, by contradiction actually, that is that's the hint actually. Okay. So, what you, what you tell here is that okay, if, you, if you just have this kind of equation for every continuous function g of t, then the only possibility that you are, that you are having is g of t has to be equal to 0 for all time in this interval t0 to tf, the, that is a powerful theorem actually. All right, so, using this, uh, this uh, fundamental, this necessary condition okay, and this fundamental theorem, what you are, what you are seeing here, these uh, necessary conditions of optimality can be derived actually. That means, uh, if you pose a problem like this, that means you need to optimize this, uh, this uh, cost function or cost functional j, which is given like this, where L is a kind of a function that you want to select for your optimization problem. Okay. So, so, you want to optimize this j by appropriate select selection of x of t and we are considering here that t0, t f are fixed values. Okay. Then uh, we want to obviously make sure that first variation of j, delta j is 0 for arbitrarily selected uh, delta x of t. That means, no matter what I select, whatever I select delta x of t, this has to be same. And hence, it will turn out that you, can, you analyze this first variation and then tell the okay, so there are some coefficients multiplied by delta x t and things like that. And then when it is, uh, when it should happen for arbitrary delta, of, uh, delta x of t, then we excite this condition and tell okay, the only way it can happen is that coefficient has to be 0 and hence, this is this uh, conditions will pop up naturally, which will the first of that tells us that uh, del L by del x minus d by dt of del L by del x dot is equal to 0, which is very famously known as uh, Euler Lagrange equation. And then associated with that, we will turn out that we have a boundary condition or transversality condition actually. Okay. And you can also note that part of this transversality condition can, all, can, uh, can be already satisfied by the problem formulation itself. That means, if you are talking about a fixed initial condition problem, let us say, then delta, delta x 0 is certainly 0. Okay. So, there is no variation of that, uh, that uh, value x 0. So, in that situation this, this condition does not throw any other additional uh, uh, kind of information, we already have that information basically. So, similarly you can, uh, you can pose that okay, both, both the end, coins, uh, end conditions are also fixed, that means x 0 is fixed, x of is fixed, 
uh, in, in addition to T0, Tf being fixed, then this condition is not necessary actually, because in both the situation it will tell okay delta x f is 0 and delta x 0 is 0. That means, in both the cases we will end up with only identities actually 0 equal to 0 that way. Okay. So, the, but if, if it is otherwise that means, let us say x f is free, then certainly this is not 0 and hence this condition del L by del x dot evaluated at T f has to be 0. Okay. So, that, that condition uh, that equation I mean this condition or transversal decondition can be exploited that way actually. Proof is also not uh, that bad I mean as I, as I told it can be derived using this uh, uh, this first order variation uh, but this necessary condition that first variation has to be 0 and fundamental lemma we can excite and try to prove actually. Very quickly you can see this uh, if I take about x star of t which is optimum path which is a an x of t is a neighbor a neighboring path then I want to analyze this delta j which will pop up one uh, one will pop up because of x of t another one will pop up because of x star of t and I want to take the difference between the them be between the two and then because the limits of the integral are again same I can combine them and it turns out that this delta j is nothing but integral of delta l of t I mean integral of delta l dt. So, if you simply take delta l and integrate it out over t 0 to t f we got the answer actually. Yes. So, can we do that? Of course, you can do and this uh, this uh, delta L turns out to be something like this by definition L of all that because remember this is x and this is x uh, I mean this is x dot x star dot plus delta x dot is x dot this is x. So, what you what you see here is replaced in terms of this one plus this uh, delta x terms actually. Okay. So, once you do that and you neglect higher order terms and things like that it turns out to be something like this. This first two terms will be kept other terms will be higher order. So, we will try to neglect that. Once you neglect that this delta j in the lim in the limiting sense turns out to be first variation of j which is nothing but that actually. Now, we can see this is a problematic term because the, the variation of derivative we do not want to talk about that. So, we, we take this integral thing and then uh, by definition this is the delta x dot is again like that and then we apply parts in this integration by parts tell that this is the first function that is the second function. So, I will integrate that one and keep the first one there then take the derivative of the first one integrate the second one things like that actually. So, then uh, this uh, we can excite this uh, this other condition that uh, integral of derivative derivative integral things like that. Uh, so, this one will go and we are left out with only delta x here and similarly we will also be left out with only delta x. So, no matter whatever is the coefficient we are left out with variations in terms of delta x only that is that is the kind of transformation actually. Now, we can uh, go to go back to this uh, proof I mean this delta j definition and then plug in there whatever whatever we got here okay. this first term is as it is we keep it is keep as it is second term we plug in whatever values we got from here and then we are left out with uh, this this terms actually first term is as it is second term is, uh, is, is first I mean one term like this and another term like that what we got here actually. Now, we combine this uh, this delta x delta t terms one side and now uh, there this boundary condition sort of thing one side and this has to be equal to 0 for all sorts of variations for uh, delta x as well as delta x f actually for all variations of delta x and delta x f it should all happen actually. So, then that uh, by by necessary I mean this by fundamental lemma we can tell that okay the, the coefficients have to be 0 and hence we got the necessary conditions one is the Euler equation or Euler Lagrange equation. The second one is the transversal eddy condition which we just uh, I mean we summarize that here actually okay these two conditions that is what we can we can derive it quickly basically that way. And also don't remember that the condition 1 must be satisfied uh, regardless of the end condition that means it, uh, it does not matter what boundary conditions you are putting this equation is a path equation needs to be satisfied from T0 to Tf all the time actually. And this essentially gives us a transversal eddy condition actually. And as I told before, this part of the equation can be already satisfied by the problem formulation. If something is free, then the associated correspo uh, uh, the corresponding coefficient has to be zero actually. That that's the way it needs to be exploited actually. So very quickly, see an example. Okay, we want to see minimize this cost functional with respect to these boundary condition. Remember, this uh, t zero is zero, t f is one, and x zero is also fixed at 2 and x f is also fixed at 3. So, it is a fixed endpoint problem actually. So, the solution sense if this is L whatever is there inside the integral first we apply the E L equation which will give us uh, d x del L by del x that means you have only 1 from here 
and then del L by del x dot is 2 x dot and then take derivative of that that is 2 x double dot. Okay. So, we left out with the equation that x double dot is half and hence if you take the integral twice then you will end up with x of t is something like this. So, obviously, C 1 C 2 needs to be evaluated based on the boundary condition what you have. So, if you put the boundary condition at x of 0 then that is the uh, first two terms are 0. So, obviously, the C 2 is 0 here. Okay, x of uh, no sorry x of 0 is 2. So, you put 2 here okay, and these two terms are anyway not there t equal to 0. So, what you get is C 2 equal to 2 and now you go back to the other condition x of 1 is 3 you try to put that also you are left out with only C 1. So, C 1 you can quickly compute. So, once you compute C 1 and C 2 obviously, the solution is that way and in this case the solution turns out to be that way actually. Okay. Now, the, the beauty here is or the critical point to note here is the moment you change any of the boundary condition a little bit that means, you keep everything else same, same cost functional, same initial condition. Let us say now we talk about x of 1 is really free that means, uh, previously it was fixed at value 3, now we do not care actually it can be any value. Then what happens? We go back to that uh, same situation the EL equation will remain same anyway. So, we will end up with the same solution here. But the boundary condition sense one boundary condition is same. So, we will get the C 2 as same 2. So, we are left out with that one, but the other condition is not known to us x of 1 is no more 3 what we had here. So, we cannot apply directly as we did that here. So, what you do then uh, we accept the transversality condition we go back to that and tell okay, we have that weapon here we will try to apply that and then we will apply only at T f because T 0 x delta x 0 is 0 anyway that, that does not give us any further information. So, we will uh, apply that here delta x uh, del L by del x dot uh, evaluated at T f uh, has to be this uh, has to be 0 and hence uh, and this has to be 0 for all variations of delta x f and obviously, that, that means that the coefficient has to be 0 okay. and, this, and this now we have to evaluate this fellow actually del L by del x dot which is nothing but del L by del x dot is 2 x dot actually. Okay. So, this 2 x dot evaluated at T f equal to 1 that gives us this thing T f by 2 evaluated at T f equal to 1 plus C 1 equal to 0. Okay. So, obviously, T f 1 means this is 1 by 2 actually. So, 1 by 2 plus C 1 equal to 0. So, that means C 1 is minus half. So, what solution you get is x of t is t square by 4 minus t by 2 plus 2 compared to that solution here this is t square by 2 plus 3 t by 4 plus 2. Okay. So, this is there is a drastic change in the, in the solution nature itself just by having a different boundary condition actually. So, I mean the, the message to uh, I mean kind of give here is uh, everything that you pose the problem is important actually. The moment you change this uh, this cost functional obviously, the answer is going to be different even the boundary conditions if you change obviously, this is a very different problem it is uh, it need not be very I mean need not be even close to the other boundary condition problems actually. So, even if you are at least same boundary conditions do play an important role actually that is the message there. Moving on we also so, what we derived here in this condition and all that we essentially assumed that uh, T 0 T f are actually fixed. Now, the condition is uh, they can also be free I mean I do not have to be restricted uh, too much on this initial time and final time I can make initial time fixed and then T f is free or vice versa or various combinations of that. So, in general the transversality real equation will remain same anyway. But the transversality condition says this is true if you bring in the flexibility in time initial and final time also. So, we not do not I mean we not not only have the first term but first term is uh, what we did before plus this additional term which contains this uh, this variation in t also at uh, t 0 and t f remember this uh, variation of time is allowed only at initial and final points of time where you start where you end you have a flexibility on the way you do not have a flexibility really time is independent independent variable it starts uh, developing you cannot vary that uh, as it develops actually. But you have certainly have a liberty of where to start the problem and where to and when to end the problem actually. Okay. So, obviously, if you have this uh, transversality condition which is very general then the special cases will turn out to be like fixed endpoint conditions. So, as we discussed before if uh, everything is fixed T 0 x 0 and T f x f all pairs are I mean, both the pairs are fixed then obviously, all these variations are 0 at both at T f as well as T 0 and hence it does not give us any additional information. Now, only if T 0 and T f are fixed as case 2 then this part does not give us any additional information. So, what we got is uh, what you derived before 
guess is this, this condition will hold good and because of that the, co the coefficients in the initial time and coefficient in the final time will be 0. So, that we will have to exploit actually. Now, a case 3 we can bring in further generality and tell okay, t 0 x 0 is fixed, but t f x f are free that means we are talking about free final time and free final state also. So, in that situation the initial time will, will not be giving us any, any information, but the final time sense we have to keep this condition as it is. So, this, this will give us the necessary condition for, for dealing such cases. And this means uh, probably individually these two has to be 0. Okay. So, that means we have to have the, the same number of boundary conditions as number of differential equation that will pop up naturally actually. Okay. Now, we can squeeze this condition a little further and tell okay, t 0 x 0 are fixed anyway, but in addition to this let me fix t x f also, but t f is free. I mean uh, this is a beautiful class of problem actually it is slightly difficult problem also in a way, but you can visualize this, this missile guidance problem especially. You have a liberty of uh, you start your missile when you, uh, some t 0 value that you know and where you are starting that also you know and if where you are falling also you, you know because you obviously have to fall on the target actually. So, wherever is your target that is your fixed uh, end point actually. Okay. So, that means xf is also fixed on the target location let us say. Okay, initial time of launch is known, your launch position is known and the final position of the missile is also known. Uh, and TF is normally I do not care actually as long as I fall on the target uh, in a very precise, pre precise way. So, normally TF does not uh, play such a big role even though you think okay, if I if I have to kill the enemy I have to kill in a faster time anyway. I mean, that is true in a way, but in general missile guidance uh, problems are not uh, such critical for TF condition actually. They are very critical about uh, mesh distance condition that means uh, uh, the final XF has to be on the target that is more important than when you fall on the target actually. So, this is a very class of problem very uh, relevant class of problems actually. Now, if you, if you think about the other way that means you tell okay, well I, I do not have to fix x f, but let me fix t f. Okay. Right. So, this is probably a problem where you think about uh, something like uh, aircraft guidance actually. You start with uh, let us say city 1 airport, uh, I mean city 1 airport and you want to go to city 2 airport. Obviously, the I mean the final things uh, are not on your hand that means uh, depending on the runway clearance and things like that. But, uh, but you have to reach that uh, city 2 at a certain final T f actually okay. and as long as you are around that city 2 at the final T f you are okay probably and after that the terminal guidance and other things are airport authority anyway. So, these are all the various cases where uh, we can relate our uh, real life problems in a very good way. I mean the again that uh, the message here is optimal control gives us all this framework, a very neat framework to discuss all these uh, so called difficult problems uh, that we cannot deal using only stabilization control theory basically that is the message there. We can still further generalize this and tell okay, if t f t 0 x 0 is fixed and t f x f is, is not really fixed, but it is constrained to lie on a given curve as I uh, that is this the problem that I discussed before probably satellite guidance is uh, launch vehicle guidance to throw a satellite in its orbit is false in that actually. Okay. And hence also ballistic missile guidance are kind of uh, like that as well. So, there, there also you use some of these concepts actually. Okay. Anyway, so coming back to this, uh, this is uh, uh, the transfer general transversality condition turns out to be like that, but uh, the remember this x delta x f is no more completely free, it is constrained to lie on this that means delta x f is something like this. So, I can put this delta x f back in that way okay, and try to combine these two okay. and then uh, I am left out with only delta t f okay. as long as this delta t f is there then I am constrained anyway I have to, the delta x f has to be given by that actually. actually. So, when I, when I can look at this equation all that it gives me is some sort of equation that way so, as long as I satisfy this equation which is the coefficient of that actually then I am done. So, like that the, the, depending on various cases like uh, various situations that you want to impose the problem from this gender, generic transversality condition you can derive several transversality condition or several boundary conditions essentially. Okay. Again an example we will uh, talk about uh, minimizing this cost functional with respect to x 0 equal to 0 and t f x f lie on this particular curve now. Okay. So, EL equation sense is very clear del L by del x minus d by dt of del L by del x dot equal to 0. There is no x, there is no x term directly, so partial derivative of that is 0 
and partial derivative of x dot is there anyway. So, that one I have to take first and then I will then I will take d by d t of that one actually. So, if I take partial derivative of uh, this square root of 1 plus x dot square with respect to x dot then that is what it is and then uh, this particular term I have to take derivative of that again actually. Okay. So, if I do that all these uh, calculation things like that it turns out to be something like this and as essentially we can cancel out the terms that are like plus minus terms and all we are left out with something like uh, okay. I mean essentially this uh, all that it gives us is this uh, this coefficient is non zero and hence x double dot is zero that is all you are and I mean we are leading to actually. Now, if x double dot is 0 then obviously, the solution is x, uh, once you integrate it twice it is like c 1 t plus c 2 and then you can bring in the boundary condition and tell okay, my first boundary condition is x of 0 is 0. So, I will put it there that gives me c 2 equal to 0. So, my x of t is really c 1 of t that is as simple as a linear curve in time actually, but this particular thing is constrained to lie on that curve whatever curve is that that is another linear curve on that. So, obviously, I have to I have to satisfy that particular situation I mean that condition. So, I put it back here this uh, this transversality condition and I am left out with this uh, this equation where I can bring in this uh, this x dot of f remember x dot is nothing but c 1 actually okay. x of t is c 1 t. So, x dot is c 1 x simply. So, you put minus phi c 1 plus 1 equal 0 that means c where c 1 is equal to 1 phi 1 over phi actually. So, essentially what you get is c is x of t is essentially t by phi that is all you got actually that is the solution that is the optimal solution actually. So, and this t by phi lies on this curve actually ok. So, picturally if you want to see what goes on then probably you can see this time space directly then minus phi t plus 15 is something like it has to pass through 15 obviously at t equal to 0 and minus phi t means something something like this actually ok. This is the constraint curve and then you are having a solution which is uh, one fifth of t I mean t by phi basically. So, that is essentially something like this ok. So, you are essentially I mean uh, looking at uh, that t f where it, it it ends there actually that is your t f ok and the corresponding value and other things will be there ok. So, t f turns out to be if you just equate them together then t s t f turns out to be uh, like this value 75 by 26 actually. Mm -hmm. So, that is uh, that is the T f that is the solution uh, the T t over 5 is your optimal solution and uh, that satisfies all sort of conditions actually ok. Now, all these things that we discussed so far is uh, without constraints they are all free optimization problem there was also I mean on a, on the only condition uh, constraint was boundary condition that is all, but you can also have path constraints on the way ok and that is how it is relevant to our problems because on invariably we talk about uh, state equations actually state dynamics and whatever solution we need to find for control optimal control need to satisfy the system dynamic constraints anyway that is valid entire path actually. So, those are more relevant problems and let us talk about uh, variational problems with and without constraints actually in a more generic sense and first thing we talk about ok one more thing is all these things that we discussed is all with with respect to scalar x. Now, that is also not reality because number of states can be more than one. So, let us generalize that to vectors first and the first we discuss with respect without constraints and then we will come back to with constraints actually ok. So, without constraints, but it is a multi dimensional problem that means, uh, you know the cost functional to optimize j is something like this. Remember normally j is a scalar value even though x is a vector j is a scalar and here x we talk about like n dimensional state vector. I mean dimensional vector in general because uh, still we do not know what is uh, x when you talk about calculus of variation in general sense. So, you have to make sure that delta j is 0 for arbitrary selection of this vector delta x of t and if you carry out the similar analysis one more time it turns out that the same EL equations will be valid and similar transversality condition will also be valid. The only difference here is these equations are now valid in terms of vector matrix equation sense. And if you see this, this is a transpose needed because that is a row vector after transpose and that will get a column vector. So, the entire multiplication will turn out to be a scalar like that actually. And here also del L by del x remember L is a scalar typically, but uh, del L by del x will certainly be a vector because x is a vector. So, this is a this is a n equation in n variables and similarly the transversality condition also uh, embeds this uh, this variation in all n variables and variation in time. 
So, that is the generality, but the equation form and everything remains very similar actually. Now, how about with constraint? Okay. So, with constraint if you discuss this uh, j is like this okay. and subject to this constraint equation now. Okay. Remember this x dot equal to some other thing, but in generally I mean in uh, without uh, like uh, considering only that special class in general we can talk about uh, generic nonlinear function which contains both x as well as x dot in addition to time that is equal to 0. Essentially what we discuss here is x dot is f of uh, f of x u I mean later later on this this is that meaning actually. So, optimize we want to optimize this cost functional with respect to I mean this subject to this path equation constraint actually how do you do that. And if you remember static optimization problem and all we conveniently did that using Lagrange multiplier here also we will try to do that. And this uh, constraint equation need not be of the same dimension as state that is also another issue. So, x is n dimensional vector whereas the constraint is a n tilde dimensional function basically okay, that is what we are discussing here. And going back to the Lagrange theorem, uh, again it is it, uh, is the, it relies on the existence theorem, which tells us that there exists uh, a n tilde dimensional vector lambda of t, so that the above constraint optimization problem leads to the same solution as the following unconstrained cost functional. Remember, lambda is a function of time now, and it is valid throughout uh, this path. So uh, we want to embed, I mean, augment this cost function uh, inside the integral, basically. So, this augmented cost function j bar contains L what is coming from here plus lambda transpose this term actually. So, that is what you have here. Now, this you can consider this as a free optimal problem optimization problem and consider lambda as a free variable as well actually. Okay. So, in that sense uh, this uh, this L star what you are talking inside the integral is nothing but that L plus lambda transpose phi where remember L star is now a function of lambda as well. Okay. So, that is that you should keep in mind actually. Okay. Now, obviously, the necessary conditions optimality we have to apply it twice once with respect to x and once with respect to lambda it will give us the this will give us the n equations and essentially you will see that this will uh, I mean this will give us the n tilde equation and this will certainly contain the same uh, same constant equation that we started with we will see that in a second actually. Similarly, transversality condition sense first we apply with respect to x and then next we apply with respect to lambda actually. So, if you apply with respect to x I mean this real equation sense the first equation is that the second equation is nothing but that one. So, you have uh, one set of real equation the second set of real equation is like that, but remember del L star by del lambda is nothing but phi of uh, so L star is like this. So, del L star by del lambda is nothing but phi. Okay, so, then you can see that this is this equation turns out to be simply phi equal to 0 which is same as the constant equation. So, the same constant equation becomes part of the necessary condition uh, we do not have to kind of account it separately and things like that once you once you do the necessary condition optimality once you plug in there essentially the same condition pops up again actually. Okay. Similarly, transversality condition sense you take t 0 x 0 fixed and t f x f for free let us say then you are like dealing with something like this okay. and uh, only applied at T f actually both the terms and if T f is also free then in addition to that uh, <coughs> we will get uh, something like this actually. Okay. So, depending on what all conditions we have we can talk about additional boundary conditions coming from there actually. Now, variable sense we have got uh, x uh, I mean x is n dimensional lambda is n tilde dimensional T f is one dimensional. So, we have this uh, now, in number of boundary condition sense we have this uh, x 0 fixed then this set of conditions will give us n tilde equation this will give us one more equation. So, you, so in a way the all the problems are always like that the number of variables and number of boundary conditions are, are same it is only a matter of how do we exploit that actually. Then as far as constraint equation generality is concerned so these are all like uh, various constraint equation things like that we can generalize that and then tell okay the the constraint equation that we discussed before here okay what what we discussed started with this is equal to 0 that's the path constraint equation anyway okay uh, and then we can tell okay if that is the case uh, that's fine we know how to do it but there is another set of constraint which can pop up which can tell okay i don't care about each of the values uh, i mean everywhere in the time as long as this integral sense i got a constant value actually 
Okay. So, let me give a simple example to kind of see what is going on. Let us say you start with something like a, let us say ballistic missile guidance problem let us say. So, you have a launch point here. Okay. Let us say you have a target location somewhere here. Okay. Now, what you do? I mean, if the way, let us say uh, I will join these two lines with respect to center of earth. Okay. So, now with respect to this angle, with re, this is also let me see that as a reference line basically. Okay. This the, and then tell okay, my, my launch vehicle is supposed to go somewhere, I mean my whatever either ballistic missile or whatever, then it is going to fall like that. Okay. As long as I, I do fall there, then I'm, I got my target actually that way. But uh, I can see that okay, as long as I, I fall there, I, I, I am done. That means I really do not have to constrain too much uh, myself actually. So, how do I do that? Now, you consider this angle development starting from this reference line and this angle development, let us say the final angle is something like phi t. Okay. This is uh, this, this phi uh, is not nothing to do with the constraint phi, I mean this is just angle phi basically. Okay. So, e, as long as I e, kind of uh, I mean cover this angle ultimately, okay, then I am done actually. So, how do I how do I formulate this? I mean let us say I join any other point on the trajectory, I join it that way and tell this is my actual phi at uh, some location, I mean some point of time whatever is my launch vehicle, I mean launch vehicle there, that is what uh, the angle I have covered actually, this is my phi angle. Okay. Now, as long as this phi is equal to phi, I mean at t, uh, t f ultimately when the problem is over t equal to t f, my phi has to be same as this phi t basically. So, that means this, this constraint that I am posing here is in terms of the range angle, what is this angle is called range angle actually. So, the, the, the total covered range angle has to be equal to phi t, as long as that is there then, then I am okay actually. So, again these problems are also relevant in practice, so that is the message there. So, they are called isoperimetry constraints and the question is how do we handle that actually. Okay. Now, you can see that uh, there is a difficulty here, but there is a very clever solution to that as well actually. So, now what you do is you define this, uh, this additional state variable let us say, okay. because you remember these are all implicit functions of time x dot x and all that and is integrating uh, these are all integrated over you know, I mean dt, they are, they are all integrated over time actually. So, if I convert it something like some variable d by d t of some variable, then I can apply d by d t of that into then I integrate over d t, then I am I am done with that because this integral and derivative will cancel out actually. So, keeping that in mind, I will define uh, some sort of a new variable which is d x n plus 1 divided by d t that means x n plus 1 dot is nothing but that. Then this is same equation that I am having, it turns out to be like this, okay. I put it back that way and then tell okay now it is a derivative uh, and then there is integral. Okay. So, instead of doing derivative integral now I can evaluate that and tell okay this is nothing but like that final value, final value minus initial value of the integral variable uh, not x dot, but uh, x n plus 1 simply. Okay. So, this is an addition. So, this is uh, this constraint that we are talking here is equivalent to having both the things together. I have this dynamic equation and I have this equation and ultimately actually. Now, if I this is remember this is the difference between the variable values at t f and t 0. So, if I choose one or one of that then I can fix the other one actually. So, for example, if I choose this t 0 equal to 0 then the t f has to be k going back to that example this uh, t 0 that means pi of 0 is 0 here because that is the reference line anyway. Okay. So, I can choose that and then tell okay, the final difference is nothing but the total range angle that I that I am looking at actually. Okay. But that is uh, these are various uh, or if you generalize this problem a little bit, you can talk about like uh, this angle becomes 360 degrees, so it will take the total revolution and come back to the same position. That means, it is also relevant for satellite guidance problems actually. Okay. So, various uh, aerospace engineering problems can be handled that way and uh, using both this uh, non holonomic constraint as well as isoperimetry constraint. Now, there are second thing, uh, there is something like so, so far what we discussed is all equality constraint. Now, the problem uh, the beauty of optimal control is uh, like not only you have to re get restricted by these things, but you can also tell okay, I will bring in inequality constraint as well. That means, uh, the state values and control values will be given uh, dictated by certain bounds that we know a priori. And if I, if I know the bounds a priori, that means, let us say my control surface reflection should be lying uh, between plus or minus 30 degrees. 
or my let us say my altitude of the vehicle should not go beyond 30, 30 kilometers let us say because after that the running pressure is very low then all these things I can embed that into the traject optimization problem and then tell uh, then the solution that I am getting from that problem is certainly going to be stabilizing it is optimal things like that actually. But then we are not going to discuss too much on that that will lead us to optimal control deeper into optimal control actually. And here we just want to get a flavor of optimal control and uh, try to kind of exploit as much as possible. Okay, so, this is uh, isoperimetric constraint and then all these things that I discussed in this class uh, uh, are taken from these two references anyway. But uh, essentially this entire class what I talked is a kind of a overview of all these cl uh, calculus of variations. And we can see next class that using some of these kind of uh, I mean top concepts that we discussed here, we can actually very cleverly or very easily rather formulate optimal control problems for various class of systems. And I will also try to give uh, many engineering examples where this, uh, this uh, formulation of the problems like cost function, boundary conditions all are relevant in engineering practice especially in aer aerospace engineering. And then we will move on further for uh, this uh, linear class of problems and things like that actually. Alright, uh, with that I will probably stop. The references to follow is uh, something like this. The first one is essentially the one which essentially talks about both static optimization and dynamic optimization. You can, you can also see this particular book which is a fairly recent book talks about some of these calculus of variation concepts and lot of this optimal control theory as well. And what we discussed next class and all are also taken from a very classic book which is like uh, optimal applied optimal control Bryson Hoo and all that, that I will tell in the next class anyway. Alright, uh, with this I think I will probably stop this class actually, thank you.